Manchester United 5, Leicester 2. Guys, let's take that in. Let's enjoy that because we saw good football. We saw goals. We actually saw our players looking good. Now, look, it's a weak and Leicester side. It's Leicester. They're not good. They made a lot of changes. It was a weak and Leicester side. We had to win that game. The goals they got were very soft, very easy. I think Bendy could have done better for the first. But we can only judge what's in front of them. We absolutely battered them. And we never beat a current Premier League side, even if it was outside a Premier League game. Um, and we never scored, sorry, we never scored five goals against current Premier League side under 10 arc. We've done that under, of course, Vanish Soroy today. And it was good football. The players were happy. I did watch that game and think, I don't think those players gave 100% for 10 arc this season. I think they maybe one of them gone because they just looked happy. They looked different under Ru Vanish Soroy today. And maybe they were excited for Amara and there was a new lease of life there. And look, United dominated the game. Four big chances to Leicester's won. 23 shots. We're definitely more clinical today, but we dominated. This was the stat I was trying to read out earlier, but butchered. Manchester United have never scored five goals against a Premier League opponent under Eric Tenard. Let's just enjoy this because, look, we might go and we might lose to Chelsea, but let's just enjoy it in the moment. We haven't had many wins this season. It's a bit like the Barnsley game. We beat them 7-0. Enjoy it in the moment because, you know what? I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the goals. I'm really happy with the players' performance. I'm happy with everything. And Ruth Van Nistelrooy, I'm really happy for him. Look how much it meant for him. He was saying attack, 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 attack. And there were some changes today. The midfield was so much more compact. I really liked Agate and Casemiro playing together nice and compact. It was more of a 4 4 2. Still don't like Rashford on the right hand side, but Garnacho did have a very good game on the left hand side, electrifying. Question marks over BND, question marks over Lindelof. Xerxes, I just think he needs time. I'm going to be patient with him because I actually do really rate Joshua Xerxes. Ahmad coming on looking impactful. Bruno Fernandes. All over the place, you know, get, getting goals, making good passes, you know, had a really good game. I felt that Casemiro, Bruno Fernandes, two of the biggest figures in sort of the United dressing room, really stepped up today and looked good and looked back to the best. And I've always said with Casemiro, he was crap, but the system didn't help him. The system under Tenog didn't help the midfielders. Today it was more compact and we saw the best midfield performance I've seen from Manchester United all season. I'm not going to get completely carried away. It's not all on Tenag. I think some of it is to do with player effort. But I thought Casemiro was fantastic. I thought Bruno looked back to his best. I thought Agate, I want to talk about him in more detail. I thought he was all over the pitch, winning back the ball, having a fantastic game. Uh, Garnacho had one of his best games in a while. Actually, I don't think he was as good the last two games, but he looked electric. He looked like a new lease of life. And garnacho has got 10 goal contributions and nine starts this season. That's the same as Mbappe. Ahmad, when he was getting subbed on, was smiling. I thought Delic was rock solid there. And I feel like Delic's performances performances are going under the radar. I thought he looked really good. I thought he looked absolutely rock solid again. I think he looks like a leader. I'm really happy with the son of Delic. Mashrabi, when he came on, looked right. I've still got question marks around Delo this season. I like Delo, but he's not having the best season. I tell you what, we really need Luke Shaw back and fit because I feel I want Martin as a centre-back. I'm not the biggest fan of Lindelof. We're going to start by talking about Bruno Fernandes because he's a guy that we know how good Bruno Fernandes is. We know there's a top player in Bruno Fernandes, but it's been really frustrating with Bruno Fernandes because he's been nowhere near good enough this season. I think his first goal of the season was today, although he was robbed of a really good goal in the Community Shield versus Man City, which I know was technically offside, but that would have been a really good goal. And I thought Bruno Fernandes was quite good in... um the West Ham game, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. I thought he had a really good game versus West Ham, uh, but he could have got like four assists and was absolutely robbed of that. And I think, you know, with Bruno, Ten Hag was basically asking him to press like this crazy monster. And then that meant Bruno just didn't have the energy and time on the ball. Today, his role was being more involved in play on the ball rather than off the ball, influencing the games. So he was all over the place, making really good passes, good touches, winning back the ball, putting an absolute shift. And we saw the Bruno that I want to see. He goes to Portugal international duty. He puts a man in match performances. He comes back to United and he's just under Ten Hag. It was awful. And I do think Bruno was low on confidence at United. There was a time where he could have shot and he laid a pass and all of that. But I think the goal and then the second goal, we maybe get that confidence in Bruno to get him back to his best. Because look, we all know that Bruno Fernandes is a really good player that's been nowhere near his best this season. And I think Amarin, it'll be interesting to see if Amarin plays him as an eight or Amarin plays him as more of a shadow striker. But I think Amarin can get him back to his best because I think players, particularly Bruno Agate, Casemiro, Mena, are midfielders, I think would really benefit from just a systematic change because I felt the midfield was where it didn't matter who played. So no one was playing particularly well in there. And I think that was more down to the system. But Bruno today, seven recoveries, four chances created, two goals, two out of three dribbles completed, two out of two aerial duels won. You know, it was winning back the ball, but the four chances created, 
Whether you like Bruno Fernandes or not, because he does give the ball away, he can be frustrating. He's a guy that can win you a game. If it's nil-nil and it's really tight and you've got to break down a low block, he's the guy that can produce that moment of magic to win you a game. But he's also a really good player. And when he's good, he's fantastic. And today, he was absolutely fantastic. It was between him and Casemiro and Agarte for Man of the Maps. That's the best I've seen in the midfield all season. And look, Bruno's getting on a bit. There was a lot of shouts, sell Bruno, sell Bruno, sell Bruno. But... 150 goals and assists for Manchester United. You know, he's not just a goal and assist merchant. There is a good player there. Frustrating the season, not had a good season, but the last three months of last season, he was unbelievable. He was unbelievable today. I just want to see Bruno back at his best because there's a fantastic player there. That's Agate's first half numbers, but they don't really matter because we've got his full game numbers here. Manuel Agate, I think his last two starts for United have really impressed me. He didn't get a Premier League minute last game, which I think is another reason why they pulled the trigger on Tenog because Ineos brought Agate in as a part of the main or they really want Agate to be part of the future and work and Tenog just wasn't given Agate Premier League minutes. But for Agate's last start, it was at the Europa League. And then today, I think Agate's last two starts for United has been really good, really impressive. I think he brings out the best in Casemiro. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I've been really impressed with Agate. He had an awful game versus Spurs, but ever since then he's looked really good. And of course, we expect under Amarin that he's that he's going to be good as well. But 90% pass accuracy, 75 total touches, nine ball recoveries, eight passes into the final third. There was always questions about Agate's ability on the ball, but he was really playing into the final third. Well, four tackles attempted, four one, two air was contested, two one. So we won made two interceptions, nine ball recoveries, four out of four tackles, two out of two aerial duels. He just kept winning back the ball. Every time Leicester had the ball and Agate was there. I just felt like Agate was going to bring back, win back the ball. He was there, he was recovering, he was making tackles, he was picking up. I think he made a goal line clearance last week and, and made a really key tackle that led to a goal last week as well. Um, but I really, really like Manuel Agate, his movement, his positional sense, his reading of the game. And I feel Casemiro, I don't actually think, has had a bad season. Bar the Liverpool game, I don't think Casemiro's had a bad season because I said I thought he was quite good in the Fulham game, the, the Cup game versus City, the Community Shield. I thought he was quite good versus West Ham. I actually don't think Casemiro's had a bad season, but I feel that Agate and Casemiro works really well together. And this is what I said, with Agate winning every duel and he's basically ever, he's covering so much ground, I think it unlocked Casemiro to play further up as an eight. I think because Casemiro doesn't have the legs and athleticism as he's getting older, He's now better, a bit more advanced because you see him influencing games. He gets goals. He's lethal from set pieces. His head's really good. I think Agate gives Casemiro that protection. Casemiro doesn't have the legs and energy to cover all this ground as a six like Tenag wanted. But with Agate there, it unlocks Casemiro. It takes a few responsibilities off him. And then Casemiro can influence the game further forward, which he's really good at with those runs. Agate's winning the ball back, covering the ground, takes a bit of that responsibility off Casemiro. So Casemiro is a little bit higher up, a bit more comfortable on the ball. And I think it works really well because when Agate's winning the ball, Casemiro can get up. And I, I really, really like Manuel Agate. I think he's going to be a really good signing. I can't wait to see him under Amarin. And I saw this and Darnish tweeted this back in May. And I think Darnish was really was quite right. I think we wrote off Casemiro and I wanted him sold in the summer because of the wages and everything. But I did also say Amrabat had bad games in the six. Mayno had bad games in the six. Agate's game versus Tottenham was horrendous. I did say some of it is the system. Now, I think some of it is personnel, some of it is legs. And hopefully Agate can, sorry, Amarin can fix this. But I think some of it is the system. Now, I'm not going to act like everything's changed now. Ten has gone. We beat Leicester cool, but Leicester are shite. Of course, we've got to see things going further forward. But I've always felt that the problem was the system. Um, you know, everyone was saying that Casemiro is the problem. Drop Casemiro will be fine. We drop Casemiro for games. We weren't fine. You know, when people said drop Bruno, we'd be a good team. We drop Bruno, we're crap. We drop Rashford, we're crap. We got rid of De Gea, we're crap. You know, there's always a scapegoat. De Gea, Ronaldo, Bruno, Rashford, Maguire, McTominay, Fred. We've had times where none of them have played and we're still crap. And I think Casemiro was an easy scapegoat at the back end of last season. But I think as he aged, there's fitness issues that have sort of gone with it. But actually, if you don't require him to do so much running, but you still have him on the pitch, he's a good player there. Talking of running, Garnacho runs like a monster. It'll be interesting to see how he does under Amarin because he's 20. He's frustrating. I've always said this. Garnacho for me, best off the bench is an impact sub. But... There's no doubt about his ability. Some people don't like Garnacho. I like Garnacho. I think for a 20-year-old kid, he's so exciting. His ability to just want to get the ball tap, make things happen. For a 20-year-old kid, he's so raw. Of course, he's going to miss chances. Of course, he's going to be frustrating. You've got to go back to Ronaldo and how he used to frustrate fans. He's a 20-year-old kid. 
But there's such an exciting talent there that can get better and better and better. And I really do like Garnacho. One goal, one assist today, two tackles, won the free kick, which obviously resulted in the goal. Created five chances, was really lethal. He gets involved, he makes things happen. And sometimes his finishing isn't there or, you know, maybe he's not quite as good as Rashford 1v1, but he's really developing as a player. And I think, you know, 10 goal contributions already this season, I think he's really, really going to come up a level. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Garnacho. I don't understand the hate he gets. 10 goal contributions in 15 games, but actually 10 goal contributions in nine starts. Some fans don't rate him because he's frustrating, but I think if Garnaccio was 26 and had been here three, four seasons and cost 80 million like Anthony, I could understand frustration, but I'd say, oh, you know what? He wasn't an 80 million player, but he does a job. I'd keep him. With Anthony, he's not an 80 million pound player and I'd sell him. But with Garnaccio, I'm like, there's a player there. He's frustrating, but he's raw. And there's so much talent there. And he could be such a player for us. And I think you just have to understand that the context that he is 20. We have to be patient with players like Garnacho and Hoyland. We have to be. We have to be patient with Xerxes. Xerxes wasn't very good today. We've got to be patient with it. And I know we're Man United and we want this high standard, but you've got to be patient with players. You've got to realise that, yes, we spent 72 million on Hoyland, but we signed him as a 20-year-old striker that was Atalanta's third-choice striker that got nine goals. We can't expect him to be Harry Kane. We can't expect Garnacho to be Ronaldo. But what we can look as appreciate the talent that we have and the potential it may turn into. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.